Welcome to the Easy Extrusion YouTube channel. What do you know about solid biofuels? Many people associate this term with advanced refining and chemical processes. In fact, biofuels can be any renewable biological material used as fuel. With that definition, it becomes clear that things like wood, sawdust, straw, husks, even grape seeds all constitute biofuels. Let's find out how it all began. Fire played a crucial role in the life of prehistoric man. In fact, it was his best assistant. Fire warmed him and protected him from the cold in winter. Fire made his food edible and delicious. Fire lit up the darkness of night and drove away wild animals from his home. And with the help of fire, he made the first pots, weapons and tools. Initially, wood was the only fuel used by man to make his fires. The discovery of fire was a huge step towards man becoming, in some way, independent from climatic conditions. It allowed people to quickly expand their habitat, increase the number and kinds of foods they ate, produce better labouring tools and improve the efficiency of hunting and fishing. Humanity was growing. It occupied new territories and used plant biofuels intensively. The development of industry in the 18th century required large amounts of fuel. And that's why industrial stocks ran out of wood quickly. Charcoal was replaced with fossil coal. At the same time, agriculture and the wood processing industry were also undergoing developments which saw an accumulation of huge amounts of waste materials being produced, such as sawdust, straw, husks and so on which created a two-tiered environmental pollution problem. On the one hand, we had huge heaps of flammable waste products from plants. On the other, the products of fossil coal combustion. First to start solving this problem, in the 60s of the 20th century, was the Austrian company Pinney & K. They suggested a new technology for processing wood and agricultural waste under great pressure by means of a screw feeder and external heating. In 1976, Rudolf Hahnemann presented his project called BioSolaris and launched the world's first production of pellets from sawdust, peat and agricultural waste. The production of fuel pellets proved cost effective as the raw material was cheap to acquire and the ready pellets were easy to transport. Rudolf Hahnemann had an extensive plan to build nearly 70 plants for fuel pellet production. But none of those projects was ever implemented because in 1981, there was a sharp decline in prices for oil and gas. A new stage in the history of solid biofuels began in the 90s, when Sweden began producing wood pellets and briquettes using waste wood from the furniture and forestry industries. Why have biofuels been regaining popularity? Firstly, because of their calorific value. Consider this comparison. One kilo of brown coal produces 3,900 kilocalories of heat. A kilo of fireplace logs with natural moisture will give you 2,500 kilocalories of heat. And finally, a kilo of fuel briquettes will provide you with 4,800 kilocalories of heat. Secondly, the ash. Just imagine the average leftover of mineral residue, or ash, of brown coal is 20 to 45% of the weight of the original material. After burning wood logs in a furnace, 10% remains as ash. But fuel briquettes, on the other hand, burn almost completely, leaving 1% or less of clean ash. From this brief history of biofuels, I'd like to move to the more important topic, namely, production technology. <laughs> 